Yeah, we are live. Good evening. Um, if you are tuning into this YouTube live commemorative event to honor the murdered Burmese activist most recently four and uh, but dating back all the way to 1962 when generations of, uh, of the different uh, pro-democracy activists resisted Myanmar's military regime. That's 1962. And then we will also celebrate their spirit, strength and uh, stamina of resistance. And I've been in exile for 34 years and I'm still going. There are new generations called Generation Z in their teens and 20s coming up, uh, taking up the mental. Um, I am Zani. I am um, the organizer and co-founder of Forces of Renewal Southeast Asia. Uh, today's event is not a memorial service to grieve or mourn the recently persecuted uh, Burmese activist, uh, Ko Jimmy or Ko Jomenyu, uh, <coughs> Ko Pyo Zeyato, uh, Ko La Myo Aung, and Ko Aung Turazo. Two of them I personally knew. I met them briefly. They had uh, different political analyses and views. They supported uh, NLD and Doron San Suu Kyi, and I opposed the NLD and Doron San Suu Kyi's involvement with the Burmese genocide led by the Burmese military regime. But because we shared a um, you know, common goal of a free, inclusive, prosperous, and peaceful Burma, it doesn't matter that they held different views. I felt a, a deep pain in my heart, um, and uh, that was what prompted me to organize this event. Uh, I thank you all of you uh, joining from essentially three different continents, uh, North America, uh, the Europe, uh, and uh, Asia. And we have a very full program, two and a half hour, uh, with about nine different uh, musical bands. And the, uh, we, will, we also have the, the, the honor of having uh, Foreign Minister of Malaysia, Datuk Safuddin uh, Abdullah, uh, who has been an activist uh, most of his life as a student activist at the University of Malaya. And uh, that, you know, he, uh, and also we will have the honor and pleasure of, uh, of having the one of the foremost authorities on everyday resistance, uh, Professor Emeritus James C. Scott. Uh, uh, you know, he has a, a major intellectual impact on me. And when I met him back in 2003 and 2004 at a Burma Studies conference, conference he asked a very searching question, you know, like when I was pushing for economic opening, hoping that that would lead to some kind of political liberalization. And he asked, what about the inequalities and other problems? And so, you know, uh, he, uh, that question has nagged me, you know, over the last almost 20 years and I owe him a great intellectual uh, debt uh, for speaking truth to those of us who want to press ahead with our own political agendas. Without further ado, let me welcome uh, Sinfonita Spring, String Quartet from Sarajevo. As you know, Sarajevo is a very, very historic city, not only simply because it was the place that is considered to have kicked off the First World War. Uh, it, Sarajevo itself and Bosnia, uh, the former Bosnian Federation or former Yugoslavia had uh, went through what Burma is going through today, a genocide and a war. And Sarajevo's siege was one of the longest. And so we have uh, an honor uh, to uh, hear from the Sinfonita led by Professor Belma Ellis, uh, a professor of cello at the Music Academy of Sarajevo. And she will be uh, playing along with her team, Tamara Asovic, uh, violin, and Elma Dista. Uh, Professor Ellis, uh, the floor is yours. 
and they will be playing from this ancient uh, uh, city called Stolak in Bosnia, Herzegovina, uh, an hour drive from Croatian coastline. Please. Thank you. So we played this piece. You can hear me, oh? Yes. Oh, cool. I would like to just say a few words about this piece because it's very relevant to the subject that, that this event is dedicated to, to, to basically love and solidarity and compassion. Uh, it, uh, the music is based on, a, on a poems by a very famous and beloved uh, Bosnian and Herzegovinian poet called Mehmed Alia Magdizdar. And I hope you could hear uh, Tamara was uh, quoting uh, one of the songs, which is called um, Text About Time. So it was uh, giving a story about uh, eternity of time. And because this subject is very relevant, uh, his po Max poems are very old, but very relevant to today to today's subject, and also to the modern time that we are living in. Uh, it's very futuristic, although it is written um, a long time ago, but they are very relevant today. And because we talk about solidarity and love and these horrible events that happened to the 
to these people and the horrible tragedies which has which are happening throughout the world with the war with the with the uh, with the un uh, say how do you say uh, un, unjustified reasons for killing each other which we all experienced here in bosnia and herzegovina I would like to, if you let me, just uh, quote a few verses from Mac's poem book, uh, books. One of the songs, it's called Dajd, which means rain. And I would just uh, few, say a few verses. We need to stand a while beside our own sun. We need to meet our own hearts again that fled so long ago. We need to decent stone ourselves. We need to wish with all our might. This is just part of the song which actually talks about how to leave our bodies and try to understand and love each other and to have more love for each other. Thank you so very much uh, to Professor Alice and her string quartet. We have just uh, listened to um, Sinfonita string quartet from Sarajevo. Thank you so very much. And now the um, uh, my uh, my dear Rohingya brother and uh, co-host uh, Nesan will play a one minute clip of one of the four executed uh, uh, you know, the brother activists in uh, Nepido or Yangon. Nesame. At first, we didn't sing hip hop music in politics. The government think we are criticized on them, but it's not like that. We want to listen to hip hop music in Burmese. The region charged me about illegal organization act because we found the generation wave. They sent me to the court town prison and I lived nearly nine months with a solitary confinement. When I was released from prison, we start to involve deeply in the politics. <laughs> All I need is one mic. I want to express the people's desire. And that's why I, I put my tattoo on this. film was, uh, this clip was uh, made out of a, a, an hour long documentary uh, being uh, directed by Alchemy Films based in London by Sarita White. And uh, we are supposed to have, a, you know, a very well-known Burmese dissident. Um, I don't see him here. He's in uh, I war, so uh, he might be a bit late. And so um, I'm going to go to, um, the Cambodian classical Kamal singer, Peach Chakra, because uh, she is performing from a security building uh, that needs to close at eight o'clock. And so I have uh, bumped her up. Um, I hope um, that's okay with uh, all of you. And uh, she is the best known Kamal classical singer, performs in palace events, a bit, uh, you know, in front of kings and queens. So uh, may I invite um, Peach Chakra? She will be uh, performing um, a piece from the Genocide Documentation Center of Cambodia. And I am um, a fellow with that center. And I thank the, um, the DC camp and our dear friends over there for uh, giving us solidarity today. Pete Chakria, York. You're ready to go. We are skipping a, a speaker. Yes, they're coming. Yes. 
Thank you so very much to Pete Chakra and the, uh, the team there. There, th there was a group of uh, quite a few uh, technicians helping uh, set up this performance. So I, uh, we thank you all very much. Uh, now, um, let me invite um, Komothwe, who was a comrade and co-founder with uh, one of the uh, uh, executed um, dissidents, uh, Pyo Zeyato, a hip hop musician, uh, Komothwe. Uh, he is in, he's underground, so we will not be seeing his uh, <clears throat> face. So he would just, uh, you know, we would just hear his audio. Um, underground inside Myanmar, that's what I meant. Komodwe. Komodwe, open hello, your hello, mic. Hello, hello, okay, hello. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, first of all, like, uh, I would like to say that I'm very glad to speak here to honor the four heroes who sacrificed uh, their life for our people. My name is Mu Tui. I'm the president of Generation Wave, which uh, founded in 2007 by Zia Tho, me, and other friends. Here, please uh, let me share you some words about Zia Tho on uh, one of those fallen heroes. Zia Tho means a lot to me. He was not only a comrade of mine in our long fight for democracy, but also an old friend since we were at kindergarten. We went to the same high school and in 1996, when, we, when there was a student movement in, uh, in, in, in Burma, uh, we participated from our high school together. We were only 15 years old at the time. We made poster campaigns, organized students and uh, held meetings to join the university students' protest. In that movement, Ziyadu was also the leader of our grade nine students. I still remember a word of him in a meeting that we, in a meeting that he said that we were much in the streets. If there were soldiers approached, we would sit down and hold hands hand to hand, and if they beat us, we would let them beat until we die. We will not give up, we will not retreat. But uh, the protest didn't happen as the, we couldn't uh, you know, like the, make connection to the university student, but I still remember his words. In 2007 suffering movement, we met again in the protest. And after the crackdown, we had a meeting and founded Generation Wave to carry out our unfinished fight. He was arrested in 2008 and imprisoned for the first time. After he was released in the 2011, he joined NLD and later he became an MP. He was not only a brave activist, but also a smart politician and was also a very famous artist. His band, his music band, Acid, was one of the, one of the pioneer hip hop band in Burma and they made very great, great influence to many generations. Since his childhood, he always explore and bring new things to the friends and family. He was also the one who brought, you know, like the philosophical books and poems among our high school friends. And he was the one who introduced existentialism to, to us. And he raised, he was the one who raised questions on meaning of freedom. At that time, we were under the very brutal military regime. In the current movement, I saw an interview of him. In that interview, he told to the Generation Z young people that we are always behind you to support your fight. And we are together with you. And if necessary, we will be in front of you to face the challenges. Now, you all see that he cut his words and he showed us how to be a great leader by his greatest sacrifice. Now in this very honorable event to him and the fallen heroes, I would like to pass a message of him, which he wrote to outside world when he was in prison in 2008. It said, I want to say to the people that to be brave to say no, which you don't like. And even if you don't dare enough to do the right things, 
please don't support the wrongdoings. And I want to uh, echo his word, and I would like to request the leaders and the people of the world that even if you don't have enough to our fight for democracy, but please don't support with your ignorance to those military dictators who are committing such atrocity to the people. Thank you. အမှောင်းဆုံးနေနေကျွန်တော်ပြောခြင်းတာတော့ကျွန်တော်တို့ရဲ့ဒီသူရဲကောင်းတွေကိုကွန်ပြူရတဲ့အခမ်းအနားမ
um, slot him in at a later point so that the earlier speakers um, can keep their slots. And so um, the next speaker I have the uh, pleasure to um, give the floor is um, Dato Sri Saifuddin Abdullah, a uh, foreign minister of Malaysia and a lifelong activist. Brother Saifuddin? Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Brother Zani and uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, good evening from Malaysia. Now, we are gathered here uh, for a special reason, for special people, and for a special cause and a special struggle. The coup happened uh, in 2021. The ASEAN leaders came up with a solution called the Five Point Consensus. When I met with Foreign Minister Zin of the NUG, she was very polite in saying that to the NUG, the Five Point Consensus is not enough. I think I understand what she really meant, but she's a diplomat. You know that most people don't even understand and don't even agree with the five-point consensus, but we will not debate that tonight. What is confirmed and what we are very assured of is that since the coup, the violence has continued. Thousands of people have been killed. Thousands more are internally displaced within Myanmar. More people are running away as refugees. Political prisoners uh, increase in terms of numbers, and so on and so forth. There is a dialogue between the junta and the special envoy of the ASEAN chair, but there is no inclusive uh, consultation between all key stakeholders in the ASEAN junta dialogue while at the same time the junta monopolizes and politicizes, and I will say weaponize the humanitarian assistance. And on July the, the 25th, we hear report about the execution of four of our Myanmar democracy comrades, our brothers. We are worried that there will be more. We hope that was the last but we are concerned that there could be more. Malaysia condemned this heinous act. It is a crime against humanity. It shows that the junta is making a mockery of the five point consensus. And we are gathered here, we are gathered here in solidarity with our brothers. We are also in solidarity with those who, are, who have been killed in the past those who are now uh, political prisoners, those who are now living in exile, and those who are now living as refugees. And today we want to renew our commitment and our support to the struggle of our Myanmar brothers and sisters, uh, the struggle for peace and the struggle for democracy in Myanmar. Now, on the 3rd of August, I'm attending the foreign ministers meeting of ASEAN. And I will be bringing two points. Number one, that Myanmar should not be allowed to send political representation to all ASEAN ministerial meetings. Previously, our stand was that Myanmar should not be attending or sending political representation to ASEAN summits. But I think we need to extend it uh, to all sectorial ministerial level meeting. And number two, Starting with the meeting on the 3rd of August and until the ASEAN summit in November, a framework with a proper end game has to be implemented if we want to see the five point consensus realized or otherwise. Now, previously I have suggested that the ASEAN chair or the ASEAN chair's special envoy should meet with the National Unity Government, the NUG, and the National Unity Consultative Council, the NUCC. Now it is time for this meeting to be expedited and this progress made public. 
Subsequently, the ASEAN summit in November have to ask the big and difficult question and have to make decision. Will the five point consensus be continued? We know it has shown no progress thus far. Can the five point consensus be improved or should we create something new? I have met with the foreign minister and deputy foreign minister of the NUG, uh, uh, foreign minister Zin twice, one virtually and one face to face, uh, also uh, deputy foreign minister. I have met online with the chairman of the NUCC, uh, of the NUCC, and I have met with others too, other major stakeholders. Now, I am of the opinion that ASEAN needs to have a framework that has an end game. And we need to lay out the methods and processes required to achieve that end game. Now, what is the end game? This is not my end game. This is the end game that I have been listening to my brothers and sisters, the NUG, the NUCC, and the others. The end game for Myanmar is a democratic, inclusive and just, peaceful and harmonious, prosperous Myanmar, whose civil and political rights are guaranteed by the constitution. By the way, not the 2008 constitution, I'm talking about a new constitution, a people's constitution written by the Myanmar people, not by the junta. In this context, ASEAN needs to have an accurate and up-to-date information about what is really happening in Myanmar, and this can be done only by obtaining the information directly from those who are involved. This then has to be followed by an inclusive and fair consultation by all key stakeholders. They need to sit at the table in a safe setting, of course, to find a way to implement the framework, including on methods and processes such as fair and transparent humanitarian assistance, a transition plan and, and implementing party or parties that work on the transition. The transition involves ceasefire, stabilization, and the actual transition. A rewriting of the constitution so that it becomes a people's constitution and an election that is free and agreed upon by all, not the one that has been announced by the junta. I will oppose it. Malaysia will oppose it. And ASEAN should oppose it. It should be uh, an election that is free and agreed upon by all. And after, for instance, probably the rewriting of the constitution so that the constitution becomes a people's constitution. Now, those are some of my thoughts and these are something that these are things that I gathered through my meetings with our brothers and sisters, our activists, politicians, and what have you, who represent the Myanmar that we know and Myanmar that we dream of. And I wish you all the best while we in Malaysia and ASEAN should work with all of the international community for their, uh, and gain and get their support. And of course, uh, in this context, we should also work with the UN uh, Secretary General, Special Envoy, and the others. So it is an ASEAN plus or an ASEAN with international community support in supporting and facilitating in whichever human, humanly possible way uh, for our brothers and sisters in Myanmar. Thank you, Zani, and thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Saifuddin, uh, terima kasih. Um, now, uh, may I invite, um, you know, perhaps uh, the most uh, famed uh, Burmese dissident musician, um, Komoan. Uh, he has been a, a very passionate, committed and principled dissident ex in exile in Norway for the longest time. He was with the Democratic Voice of Burma. Uh, the radio station set up back in the early 1990s after Aung San Suu Kyi was awarded Nobel Peace Prize. And then when Burma opened up under a pseudo-democratic regime of General Thane Sein, Moong went back uh, and lived there. Now 
he had to flee the con uh, <clears throat> the cities again, and he is in what Professor Jim Scott called in the highlands of Gachin State. And so, come on. He's locked, uh, locked on already, we're just waiting. And uh, he will perform three songs, but uh, you know, uh, in different um, slots, not consecutively. And then after him will be uh, Professor Jim Scott. Uh, you need to unmute. Come on, fight at it. Thank you, thank you. Sorry about it. <clears throat> thank you for allowing me to participate in this memory service for memory kind of program for modern democracy, democracy activists, our comrades. So I would like to honor them by singing some songs, a few songs. And it's all not only for them, it's all, also for those who who were murdered throughout the, this military dictatorship for 60 years now. So it's from 1962. So it's for all those who gave their lives for freedom and democracy in Burma. So I let I like to sing a song called Panyela. So it's in Burmese. <laughs> ตะเงจินเยจีเปียนดาจินตุแลนี่ไลเตชินนานายมอนายอภิภูเพสูเกเลสูเมตวะเปียนแลเมซูเยตะเงจินเยเลกันจาเจนดูดูสุกไกบีเรเลกวาไลเอออมผิดผู้เพ Oh, 
Thank you. Thank you so very much, Komon. He uh, has performed his first song from um, the northern Myanmar state of Kachin, uh, where Kachin Independence Organization runs the uh, administration and territories. And many of the uh, uh, ethnic um, nationalities across Burma would like to have their genuine autonomy. Uh, so, uh, the next speaker I have an honor of inviting is um, Professor Emeritus uh, um, James Scott, who really needs uh, no introduction. Uh, he has written, you know, the, uh, half a dozen. Other people write one seminal book, and he's written about six of them. I don't know how he does it. He said he takes about 10 years to write a book, and some of his, uh, you know, most uh, influential books include Domi uh, The Art of. Um, domination uh the the um uh, you know weapons of the weak that's a major concept he developed and then that has become extremely applicable to many oppressed uh, situation he and burmese uh, colleague uh, the professor tomian have collaborated a bilingual uh, essay at which we published uh, just yesterday um, how to stay in within the Burmese military uh, for a variety of reasons and still be patriotic soldiers. And, and, and uh, I won't say any more about that. It's on our website, uh, both Burmese and English languages. Uh, Professor Scott. Th thank you very much, Guzani. Uh, uh, Chnol Namega James Scott, Lokore. Dabi Mechno Bama Namega Ushweyo Ne Mount Mat. Lungere Chelsea Nitlau Chno Yangon Takoto Ma Tete Sheshe Donga. Dabime Buma Bumazaka Piotade, Dabime Edi Yoga Kit, Buma Sagalon Sagalon Amyaibe Mayfwade, Dajamolo, Chino Ingle Inglelo Piome. Thank you very much. I want to say just a few things. Um, the, I think the martyrs whose deaths we uh, are commemorating today uh, would be the first to say, uh, as Mon Aung just said as well, that uh, they are only four of martyrs who are calling for the cause of democracy uh, since 1962. Um, and, uh, not only have uh, the martyrs been piling up, there's scarcely a village, a town, even a street that doesn't have uh, a martyr who has fallen in this period. Um, it is an astounding record. And even if we move beyond the deaths themselves, which are unforgettable, uh, we must realize that this military regime since 1962 has destroyed the life chances of now three generations of Burmese. Um, uh, and one of the results of the coup uh, is to in a sense have spread the oppression that the Rohingya and the ethnic minorities have been experiencing for the last many decades um, to the Burmese heartland 
um, and have, I think, resulted in a, a movement that is, I believe, um, without precedent in the world, a democratic movement that is without precedent in the world. What I mean is that I know of no other situation in which an entire civil society, peasants, we're not talking about cosmopolitan university students um, and urban elites, we're talking about the entire civil society from rice planters uh, to small scale shopkeepers, so on, in which the entire civil society despises the Tatmadaw or Sittat as they're called now, um, and, uh, and are arrayed against them either passively or actively uh, as well. So it is in a sense, a struggle that pits a military that has no social base, that is isolated. Um, and as uh, everyone understands also insulated from the real world they are in a sense, not part of Burma. They have their own supply chain. They have their own schools. They have their own hospitals uh, and so on. Uh, so this is a, a, an extraordinary democratic struggle. And for the first time, I think probably a true federal struggle as well. Uh, and uh, people talk a lot about federalism and the legal structures that are necessary to undergird federalism. I believe that what's happening now with the CDMs, the PDFs, and the collaboration between the ethnic armed organizations uh, and the NUG is that there is a federalism that is being created from the ground up uh, in virtual learning. Uh, that is to say, uh, federalism is a grassroots project that is going to be institutionalized, I think, from below rather than uh, from above. And I think that's important to understand. The, the other thing that I wanted to emphasize in particular um, is that I think it may have made sense uh, several years ago to look forward to, uh, or maybe even at the very beginning, the first month, let's say after the coup of reestablishing the status quo ante, that is to say of a, a shared government um, that was marching ever so slowly toward democracy. But I think what has happened in the last year and a half or so um, has so destroyed the last shred of legitimacy of the Sittat, the military uh, in Burmese society, that there is no possibility of reestablishing a combination of military rule with this military uh, and uh, civilian Democrats. So I think Burma may in the long run need an army, but it does not need this army, right? Uh, and the rate of uh, defections uh, and, um, and also subversion from within the army tells us a great deal about the degree of legitimacy the army has, even within its own ranks, um, the sense of shame and um, the shunning of uh, military families uh, and so on, uh, tells us that this is a military that rules by direct brute force uh, and has no legitimacy in the population. Um, the, um, I want to say, by the way, uh, I am working uh, on a book on the Ayawadi uh, uh, Miet, uh, um, uh, a town, uh, and hope in the next year or two to have a deep history of the Irrawaddy River, which is, if you like, the heartland of Burmese uh, culture, religion, uh, and commercial exchange. And with an emphasis on the ecology of the river rather than uh, on uh, uh, homo sapiens, if you like. Uh, I think uh, one often forgets that a river is a natural system and it's being destroyed uh, as we speak by uh, pollution dams and so on. Um, let me also, because I, and I want to celebrate uh, the 
fact that Manzani has, has made this a cultural affair. I think it's, um, we often forget in body counts and mortality and murders, we have this quantitative um, reporting of so many people killed here, or there. And it's often forgotten what a rich and deep uh, an extraordinary culture these people carry. Uh, and I want to pay tribute to uh, not just the music of Myanmar, um, but the poetry, the art. Uh, and I want to, for those of you who haven't come across it already, uh, Coco Thet, uh, a, a Burmese poet, has put together an anthology of Burmese prose and poetry. It's a, a resistance witness poetry, if you like, um, uh, going back to 1988 uh, and coming through today. And it's published by Ethos Press in Singapore. And it's called Picking Off the New Shoots Will Not Stop the Spring. Um, and I would recommend, um, uh, particularly for those people who are not Burmese themselves, um, as an introduction to the incredible richness and beauty uh, that uh, continue despite uh, the horrific oppression that comes, uh, that's happening in Burma today, to never forget that these people are the bearers of a history, a culture, uh, a music, uh, art, and so on. And uh, we are preserving not only their human bodies, but we're preserving the history, culture, uh, and art that they carry with them as a culture. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Jim Scott. Um, I could only uh, agree with him on the richness of the Burmese uh, cultures, I should say plural. Uh, you know, the, the, and also uh, the fact that we have um, musicians and artists from different, uh, you know, very, very rich civilizations that have gone through extremely dark periods in history. Like uh, Turkey, for instance, we'll hear uh, two uh, Turkish musicians um, that we had to open our event with the uh, sisters from uh, Sarajevo. Uh, you know, Sarajevo is a multi civilizational. Uh, confluence there. And then, of course, uh, needless to say, uh, Khmer civilization, uh, you know, that, uh, that was destroyed again by Khmer Rouge. And now, only in the last uh, 40 years, they are rebuilding their society and civilization. Um, the next uh, person I like to invite uh, is Laura Watson. Uh, she's a tireless um, labor rights campaigner with a global women's strike uh, that was founded by uh, Selma. Uh, in UK, you know, the, to organize around the rights of um, domestic workers, including, um, you know, cleaning staff, a very, very important kind of worker. We only look at uh, ivory towers and uh, elite, uh, you know, struggles, and we have to pay attention to people on the street. And, and uh, Laura is with Global Women's Strike. Uh, Laura? Thank you very much uh, for having us. Um, um, just to say a bit more about the Global Women's Strike, um, we're an international multiracial network campaigning for recognition and payment for mothers and others who do caring work for people and planet, um, which we call a care income. And um, the Global Women's Strike is coordinated by the Wages for Housework campaign, which was founded by Selma James in 1972. Um, and I'm based in, we're an international network, but I'm based in London, England. Um, so thank you for having us. Um, we are distraught and outraged to hear about the executions of the four political prisoners in Myanmar and have been horrified at the repression, the murder, bombing, rape and other torture committed by the military. And these executions add to the thousands of women, children and men they have killed since the military coup last year and, and uh, well before that, as you've heard. Um, 
We stand with the mothers, partners and families of the four brave men executed and who, as well as suffering the terrible pain of losing their children and loved ones, uh, have faced the most cruel treatment themselves by the military. Um, in the Global Women's Strike, we have a chant, mothers, daughters, sisters, wives, fighting for our loved ones' lives. Uh, because we know that women are the first to do all we can to protect and defend those we care for, even in the most dangerous of circumstances. So uh, I wanted to read a message. Our sisters in Thailand have sent a message which speaks for all of us, which I wanted to read out. Sisters and brothers of Burma, we, the Global Women's Strike Thailand, send this message and join you in your grief, outrage and defiance. For the four brothers executed, the thousands of other people murdered by the military and the millions terror terrorised from their homes. The military government of Thailand is complicit in every crime. They mutter weak words of concern while continuing to shake the bloody hands of the military, deny refuge to those fleeing and profit from business as usual. They do not speak for us, the people of Thailand. We stand with you. The people's movement in Thailand will do whatever we can to support the resistance to our victory for all the people of Burma. It's shameful that all governments continue to do so little. Shame that the prisoners of Insin protesting the executions have taken stronger action than any government in the world. Shame that it's the women in the jungle who are providing food for more people than any UN aid agency. Shame when poor families are resisting by refusing to pay their electricity bills. And while big business still insists, they are not supporting the terrorism of the military. Shame on those who refuse to do all in their power to end this terrorism against the people of Burma. Love, strength and solidarity and victory to the people. And that's, that was their uh, message. Um, so as a women's network, obviously, we want to make visible the work that women have undertaken and their resistance. We've been supporting the Karen Women's Organization, who work tirelessly to keep people alive, delivering food and other basic supplies. We're also working with Myanmar garment workers, who you will hear from later, 90% of whom are women. Together with No Sweat, who you will also hear from, we launched the Myanmar military Never in Fashion campaign to support the call by trade unions and civil society organisations in Myanmar for comprehensive economic sanctions and for fashion brands to cease production and implement a responsible exit until the military has been forced out of power. In Britain, we have a particular responsibility to the resilient and courageous movement in Burma as it's the colonization by the British Empire which created the conditions for the military takeover, for the decades of repression against the ethnic groups, the genocide of the Rohingya and these latest murders. The military is now facing the trial of genocide at the International Court of Justice and we're calling on the UK government to join that trial and considering their complicity they should. We will continue our pressure for the brands to pull out a few companies have announced they are leaving and that's a victory, but all must go. So we send love and power to all the mothers and all those who are resisting. Power to the sisters and to the grassroots. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Laura. Um, that's Laura Watson from Global Women's Strike based in um, UK. Um, the next speaker I have the honor to invite is Mark Kinza Al, uh, a fellow uh, Burmese um, currently in Europe. And uh, she uh, is from Line Thaya. And as you know, two of the uh, younger brothers uh, that were executed just last week, they were from Line Thaya. And we did not know them uh, very well, the same way we did with uh, Zayato and uh, Jimmy. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, their lives are are no less uh, valuable or invaluable to us. And Kaiser hopefully will uh, talk about the labor conditions and the uh, you know very, very vibrant labor organizing that is contributing to the growth and emergence of Nueu or Spring Revolution. And she's the president of the Federation of Industrial Workers Union. 
and uh, she's also a former garment worker and activist herself. Maki uh, Kainzao, I think like she will, um, you know, speak in both English and Burmese for two different audiences. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for inviting me to to attend this uh, uh, historic event. And uh, since the coup, Myanmar has been uh, hearing heartbreaking news every day. When I heard about the unjust killing of Kojimi Kofiozayado in I, I felt like my heart is broken into pieces. And I told myself repeatedly that the re revolution we are fighting must win. Because we hear this kind of news every day, killing and arrest. I, mean, I would like to show my honors to those who risk their life in the revolution to who those continue fighting for democracy by risking their lives every day, such as protesters and Bibet Dakhan forces. And those workers and union members, including workers from Garmin Sada who risk their life, we honor for their sacrifice for our country. We will never forget you all. In Myanmar, 1.6 million job loss. And over 1 million people became internet displaced persons. 400,000 government employees, including teachers and healthcare workers, have, have lost jobs. They do not have jobs, no incomes, and no housing. They have arrest warrants against them. But stay joining the Cyber Disobedient Movement. We recognize your fight and uh, honor your sacrifice. Sacrifices. There are many students who cannot go home, go back home. That is also another reason we need to win this fight for the democracy for our country. Not only we are losing jobs, but workers who are at the workplaces also have to work less than two dollars per day. They are under forced labor, wage exploitation. They are not allowed to take leave and they cannot make questions to supervisors. The workers are dismissed arbitrarily. Workers do not have job security. They became the daily labor. Women workers are facing physical abuse as, as well as sexual abuses. The pregnant women, they are losing job. Industry zones are under martial law. Whenever workers speak out for their rights, soldiers present at the factories and threaten the workers. Workers are under modern slavery. Employers took advantage of the political situation to oppress trade unions and workers. The employers in fashion brands are supporting the military financially, but also giving legitimacy by violating human rights and worker rights. Myanmar earned $404 million in 2022 March from the government sector. This shows $135 million increase than last year. That is the only number we can see online, but we cannot see how much the military received the bribes in coercion in the sector. The fashion brands are bringing big number of dollars that the military need to buy weapons and control the country. In return, the terrorist military council provides protection to embryos. The military attack all kinds of workers all over the country. It is crystal clear that any kind of revenues to the military from investors, fashion brands, or from the extracted industries and all the companies' registration fees, support the workers' killings in other industries and people killings across the country. Myanmar is facing war crimes and a crime against humanity three, 
throughout the country, but also a profound violation of UN and ILO convention by um, multinational nation enterprises and fashion brands. Companies investing and contracting in Myanmar are complicit of the military. We ask them to withdraw from Myanmar and stop supporting the military. We urge the EU Commission to start an investigation for suspension of EBA, everything but M's, from Myanmar and stop using the, doing the project of sustainable business in Myanmar. We urge EU to stand on your own principle and stop using the double standard. Please allow me to speak in Burmese too. เอ่อจมานะเมย์ก็จมานะเมย์ก็ขึ้นซ้ําหมู่ละหมู่ลงมาหยาบเพจอ๋ออ้ายนะบลูเอฟแฟนเนี่ยโอกาสถ้าผิ
so that the nigga, the maru, the low the mariga, low low need any tam hobo. The marua, jump you say, can't can you need half your body? So that the low chin in a pupogo, a lotion nigga, the jumper sit on a bamboo of my low the maye, song you are dead, low the mata maga per window, pinning it up your body. But jumper sit down, see, I'm your messo and bansan it, they go to Tincho Tade. Dolang will go Tincho day. Here's in me, my bain. I've been many neighbor people, Jamaro, see why long and she needs a bill or you might be my labor need only. A pillow less or a daddy, the people need it, the a jadari along with Jamaro look marry a pombo and highlight beyond Maduro Gar or Josie Wa, a mere son, a mere yashi need a chip. So that Jamaro didn't have a son named my last and yashi and Tedo Long and Gandhi when we dollar than lay on a leader and win when gave at it. When, 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 ดิเนาะก็ซอลูชั่นเอ่อปิกะเนทะดอเอ่อซับเปียวโลยะไลเกเนเนะหวาลิชอบไลเนเนทะหวาลิเนาะโอเคเนเนเวจัมมาတော့
Right, that's my red in this angel and pet and several hundred water who have lost their lives. I'm in the streets and I run away with like everybody. And all the police shooting down people, how many more dead bodies? And they carry bodies on the trolley, they ain't really sorry. How the fuck they trying to party after gone and like a hobby? Now, like, who the fuck gonna save you when like nobody protect? Who the fuck is gonna kill you when the police might attack? Watch your money, watch your things, watch your shit, a hundred things. Revolution, we gon' sing. 911, no how I'm doing. Another day, another killing, another moment, how we feeling? Ain't no time for reminisce to keep it hundred. We not tripping. Overthrow the country, but like, we not saying yes. All those sacrifices, and we live a life with no regrets. Middle finger to the motherfuckers, flying private jets. When you steal country's money, it's too cheap to pay for sex. Everybody working, everybody tax, everybody starving. Ain't no food on table, everybody speaking facts. Everybody lit, everybody shit, everybody sick, everybody riding on their dick, cause they know that they the shit. I've been stressing on the issue, I ain't rapping in a minute. We be counting every death, running hell and take a ticket. I'm in the streets and I'm taking a fight and I hop in the fix and I hop in the shit and I'm riding the mix and I'm doing the tricks and I have it like six. Police be shooting their guns, people be holding them sticks, you ain't doing no shit. People be sending that pics, sending that proof, but like they don't give no shit. Fuck the police and murderers and no peace and a human life's gonna decrease. And free my friends and release. If you don't believe me, come see. Hold all the blood in the country. All the police crazy and some lives they live in a hiding. Well, yeah, you already know what the fuck going on, man. Save me, man.
funds. Solidarity from the underground and above ground bands in Kuala Lumpur. And then I've got the next speaker who I consider uh, you know, a real brother, uh, the Hishamuddin Rice in his early 70s. He has been a committed uh, progressive activist since his student days in the 1960s. And um, Hisham was for the longest time an enemy of the state and he was uh, jailed uh, you know, you, uh, uh, by the Malaysian government using colonial era uh, National Security Act. And, but uh, he uh, has uh, uh, found a political space um, where he can uh, you know, operate in the mainstream uh, political uh, system. And Isham has been a tireless supporter for any uh, Burma initiatives involving not only in Malaysia, but across Southeast Asia. He's also a co-founder of our organization or more like a network uh, forces of renewal, uh, Isham. Um, I'm, I'm very honored and uh, proud to invite uh, Isham to say a few words. Thank you, Zani and everybody here this evening. Solidarity with the Burmese struggle. Memorial service for those who have been hanged by the military junta. Well, from all this historically, for the past 60 years, Burma has been under the military junta. I must recall, once upon a time, when I was around 12, the Burmese football team used to play in Kuala Lumpur, the Madaka Cup. They were part and they are part and parcel of my historical development of understanding who we are in Southeast Asia. Then suddenly Burma disappeared from the scene. I could recall categorically the idea of ayam Burma, the chicken from Burma, beras Rangoon, the rice from Rangoon. These are the memories of my childhood vis-a-vis -vis the Burmese. Well, now the names have changed into Myanmar. But what happened is we can see, Southeast Asia is changing, but it's still in a turmoil. Indonesia have gone democratic, Philippines have just had an election, Malaysia is still in very unstable, and Burmese is now still in the situation where we can see now the junta come back to power for the past 60 years. What I want to say here is that when we talk about military, one must understand, one must realize that the most important thing is the military power, the guns, the weapon, the tanks, the bullet. Where do they come from? So in talking about military junta, one must, one must also analyze the geopolitics, the interests of big military industrial complex, big nation who are interested in providing support for the military. This in Southeast Asia, this in Asia, I will categorically say the role of the United States of America, the role of the Russia, once upon a time the role of the Soviet Union, and then the role of China now in Xi Jinping. So they cannot detach themselves from all what is power here. We have seen lately how Russia, how China, in a one way or in a big way, give support and solidarity, give justification give credence to the military junta. China in particular, China in particular was really supporting. Wow, there's a big economic interest of China. Therefore, there was a big interest to support the military junta. And this is the reality of geopolitics in Southeast Asia. What our foreign minister have said is quite true, that they are trying hard, trying very hard. That is in diplomatic way, but we must also, the people struggle. Finally, in the final analysis, the decision is up to the Burmese people, the direction of the Burmese people, where they want to lead the country. The armed struggle is taking place here. It's been going for donkey's years. It's not something new. Before there was the Burmese Communist Party, then the Karin, the Kachin, they are all up in arms against the military junta. Only, only if you look at the history, I'm, I'm sure Professor Ting knew the historically if there was a federal, if there was a united front, if one day, if one day all these military forces of various nationality in Burma were able to unite, this is my dream to see a united front against the British junta, as we are talking today from 
our friend the hip hop and all this coming together the women government the workers and all this come together and i must say that it's very very interesting the dissident one those who hang was a hip hop ex hip hop musician now we can see that music is playing a role an important role and i'm not sure i must say that i'm rather uh, uninitiated vis-a-vis -vis the history and the cultural of burma but whatever it is we can see that the role of music the role of culture the role of cinema the role of rock and roll playing a very 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 important role what is even now we are in the situation post covid post covid situation and now we are engaged in the war in the war in ukraine and now the economic crisis the global economic crisis is coming so this is a way i look at it in one way is encouraging as if 1938 1939 1941 1945 is coming back the second world war like the, the before second world war but are the progressive forces in southeast asia are the workers are the women are the students getting ready for the changing situation can we build up can we build up a new democratic forces for the emerging forces well the world economic forum is doing a reset why don't we ourselves in southeast asia in the global west, in the global south to do our own reset preparing preparing seeing the world global is changing place the war in ukraine will continue the economic crisis will continue the global the global crisis as a result of post covid is going to do what are we doing so the burmese is taking a route of armed struggle what about the rest the trade union so i am always the proponent of a street protest i think what is happening in sri lanka is really brilliant how they overthrew the government how they overthrew the prime minister how they overthrew this is an encouragement so for me i always my solidarity my sincere solidarity to the burmese people i really i really every day i look at the news that very encouraging here there but what is needed also at the same time for asean for malaysia for thailand to open up for humanitarian side in malaysia there are more than 100000 burmese or myanmaris or rohingya they are refugees some of them illegal some of them legal some of them registered with unchr some are not registered they are most welcome they are already the myanmaris are already the facade the face of new malaysia they are most welcome but at the same time at the same time i could say they are most welcome ahlan wa sahlan as the arab said but it's not necessary welcome by the state it's not necessary welcome some member of the community this is the reality this is the truth but as the going on i think the more and more refugees coming into malaysia from myanmar we must stop this it's not that they are not welcome here but this is not the solution the solution the rohingyas the memories the solution is that for them for burma to have a more peaceful democratic new burma thank you very much thank you ishamuddin uh <clears throat> then you know he talked about uh, music and uh, we will have a uh, burmese hip hop uh, from rebel riot lead singer jojo uh, jojo has been using music to instill um, the love of music a uh, love of learning among uh children in poor communities and he's he's uh, he recorded this uh for this event last night he's also uh underground or in hiding inside Myanmar city somewhere and so that he also started food not bomb um you know think about it food not bomb that's what humanity needs and so the chocho has started the food not bomb in rangoon and spread across uh you know the burma and also even in a small or no longer small uh sprawling uh, border thai burmese border town of mesa and so um, let's hear uh chocho hello guys my name is chocho from river raya tonight i want to sing bella chon Italy and the first song uh in Myanmar one of my friends he translate in Burmese language since 2015 suddenly he is now in the G because of revolution he's very nice guy he very adept 
you know, Hawkeye Union and he has very good music. So I really miss him. We also did this song by Pan Vashin. You can find on YouTube. Pela Chong Bang is Vashin or something. Tonight I want to sing for you. The Gosted Vashin. And this song is very powerful for revolution and you know, very solidarity for anti anti fascist people. I really like this song and I miss it a lot. my personal love to Jojo. Uh, we hang out when he came to London to, to tour and the tour was made possible by uh, Jay Kern, who will be our next speaker. Uh, but he is a labor rights organizer uh, based in London and a campaigner with no sweat and punk ethics. Uh, Jay? Hi. Thanks, Ali. Um, yeah, my name's Jay, as I said, I'm from No Sweat, which is an anti-sweatshop campaign group based in London. Um, we've been working closely with Kaisal and the Global Women's Strike supporting their struggle for to get um, international brands to make a responsible exit from Myanmar. Um, and just on behalf of all our comrades at No Sweat, I wanted to express our deep sympathies to the friends and family of these four executed activists. Um, and to say to everyone fighting for a free Burma that we... We're, we're sad in solidarity with you and we're doing everything we can to support you and we'll continue to do so. But as we heard, I'm also representing a small activist collective called Punk Ethics, which is a group based in the UK that does progressive work inside the UK punk scene. And for the past seven years, we've been working closely with Jojo and the and Reb Riot in terms to, to help develop their Food Not Bombs project. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what Food Not Bombs is, it's a global initiative that is completely grassroots. There's no central body. It's just about activists taking, putting their time and effort into providing free food to vulnerable communities. Uh, it's international. It's absolutely spread around the world. It started in the States in the 70s, and it's just spread like wildfire. And it's Jojo and his comrades that have taken this, that brought this to Burma back something like uh, seven or eight years ago now. And their work has in itself has had a knock on effect of being uh, been taken up by the world. It's been an inspiration to the punk scene throughout the world, but beyond that, they've just, yeah, the, the, the sights of people with big mohawks giving out food to street kids has just absolutely captured the hearts and imaginations of people everywhere. So to some extent, I wanna speak on behalf of them, if I may, because obviously due to safety reasons, I haven't been able to do much more than contribute this recording, this, this beautiful song we've just heard. 
Um, and I know all the activists in the Food, Bomb, Food Not Bombs Myanmar feel the feel deeply the pain of the loss of these comrades that have been executed. Um, and again, they send out their love and sympathy to the friends and families of these people. I spoke to Jojo earlier, and he he told me how uh, Zaya Tor is um, and his and his band, hip hop band Acid, were a huge influence on him as a young teenager coming of age and his friends and yeah they grew up listening to acid's music and although they diverged to form the punk scene and became quite a, a you know have created this burgeoning punk scene in in myanmar they they're happy to say that they're friends with some of the members of acid and they consider themselves part of this wider uh wider youth subculture movement that is influencing the youth of today that are taking such a leading part in, in the revolutionary struggle. Um, the Food Not Bombs movement is certainly part of that new generation. There are more activists joining every day. And this, uh, the Food Not Bombs movement in Myanmar is spreading across the country. We heard a moment ago, some of the organizations, some of the areas where uh, Food Not Bombs has appeared include uh, Rakhine State, Kayin State, Shan State, and Mon State. And again, even the Burmese migrant community in Maysot. This is essentially what they're doing is just providing free foods of vulnerable communities across the country. And it's remarkable to think that apparently the military have managed to even outlaw this basic act of human decency. To provide free food is now considered a crime in, under the military. So despite this repression, these activists are incredibly bravely continuing their work and managing to grow this project across the country so i i want to say us we continue to support them from punk ethics and we hope to we hope to help them build this further in, in the future and once this war is won continue to work with them and help spread it further again i just offer my sympathies to the families and friends of those who have fallen and just say with the rest of the people in burma we're, we're with you Thank you so much, Jay, for taking the time to uh, join us today. Um, the next uh, musician that I'm, I'm very uh, pleased to um, offer the floors, uh, George Matthew. Uh, he's artistic director and founder of Music for Life, and he has performed and uh, organized, uh, you know, numerous uh, major events involving, uh, <clears throat> you know, music in humanitarian courses uh, he has performed with uh with the free rohingya coalition uh, you know in support of uh, rohingya genocide survivors uh, when they memorialize annually around august uh, uh, the 25th and and george is a uh, singaporean born uh, indian american conductor he now lives in new jersey just outside of um, new york city and uh, george You're muted. You need to unmute. Oh, I see. Yes. Is that better? Yes, yes. Now you're on. Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Um, thank you, uh, Zarni. Um, as, uh, as you all heard, I run an organization called Music for Life International. We do music as a vehicle for social impact around the world, which includes um, people affected by conflict, people affected by natural disaster. And Myanmar has loomed large on our radar in the last few years, our last major humanitarian project was focused on uh, the Rohingya people, both in Myanmar and outside. And um, one of the things in our focus, our, the music we use more often than not is Western classical music, which um, I, I want to connect to something that our friend uh, from Malaysia, Hishamuddin, um, said, which is that the West, and certainly we in the, in the arts that are dependent on patronage in the West 
have our connections with the large financial interests in the West in order to keep our artistic work alive. And even so, we have always found that it is, it is sort of critical for us to say that we are not necessarily aligned with the interests of the sources of the resources that we need to keep our art alive. And in fact, more often than not, we raise our art in, in support of the marginalized, of the oppressed. Um, and, and yet, when we see genocide, when we see war, when we see the action of the military industrial complex, I think it is important for us to say not, no, not in our name. We are not part of the monstrosity that is being carried out in various parts of the world. And um, at this moment, we would like to offer a little piece by one of the great stars in our, uh, in our constellation, Johann Sebastian Bach. This is the air, the slow movement from the orchestral suite uh, in D major, a piece that I think many of you will recognize, played today on the organ. Um, and we have heard music of solidarity, music of rage, music of anguish for what is happening, and especially for our poor friends and brothers who have lost their lives this last weekend. But this music today is being offered simply as a place for all of us listening now and later can just come and have a place to rest and reflect. The air from the orchestral suite and the free above.
George Matthew, um, director and founder of Music for Life and uh, Singaporean, born Indian American. Um, we have a insertion. Uh, you know, our very first uh, Burmese speaker, uh, you know, the uh, dissident and uh, a very well-known um, revolutionary from the 1988, and also the uh, former chairman of the first uh, student armed uh, revolutionary group uh, that still continues on today, um, All Burma <coughs> Democratic uh, Students, uh, ABSD, All Burma Students uh, Democratic Front. Um, and he has to speak very soon and because um, he has some um, child care so he's got two boys and so we're going to invite him to speak uh, uh, initially i thought like a, a few of us would speak uh, at the end uh, but he's got a voice uh, that he needs to look after so um komodi and he's also uh oh he was a very dear colleague of a uh, called jimmy whom he knew uh since jimmy was only uh, 18 or 19 years old they were comrades and, and Hello. Okay, okay. Uh, it is great honor to deliver my two words in here. I really appreciate Kozani and uh, our friends all around the world for the, this meeting. I really, really appreciate you guys supporting us. That's we needed. I share my great honor for to this four heroes who were murdered very recently by the military regime, especially uh, Jimmy, Kotura, and Kotura, and Zeyato. These four fallen heroes, uh, I, I give my great respect to them. And really, really, I share my great you know, emotion with their family. As you know, uh, especially Kojimi, he is a, one of my close friends. So we've been working for the restored democracy for Obama for since 1988. When I found the political parties in 1988, that Jimmy was uh, one of the our CEC member. He was at the time at, uh, at 19. He's a very energetic person. He's very very uh, uh, honor, uh, uh, humble person. We honor him or we assign him as an organizer for our party. He bring a lot of you know, activists to our to join our party. So I have uh, uh, one experience I still remember. He saved my life during the 1988. That time the military regime and the uh, intelligence plot to arrest me. He managed to uh, escape for me. That's, uh, that's, I still remember his, he saved my life. At that time, uh, right now, I'm not able to save his life. I feel so sorry about when he was suddenly murdered by the military regime. I share my emotion with the family. I still remember what he, his contribution to our freedom freedom for Burmese people. I'm also really, really angry in, uh, I'm even, you know, could not sleep very well when I had their, their, his new, I strongly denounced as a man online and a follower who committed this crime. We will never forget your crime and we will bring you before the justice. I'm also, I would like to request the international community. We need your support. We need your action against this brutal military regime. I really appreciate musicians. We need more sound from you. I'm also appreciate the author. You know, we need more boat. We, we need more work from you to support our the movement. I'm also, you know, urge citizens Obama and my comrades and friends to continue your struggle. We have to bring this military down by all our strength and wisdom. 
as you know, he heroes never died. They always with us. They are mobilizing our soul. Our hero is not fallen. The history is just written their name. Now you see the way they show us is the best way to reach our destination. Now we see our way, our will to fight is rising up now. And also I want to request our fellow Bami citizen and fellow freedom fighter. We need more unity. We need more strategy. And we need We cannot bring the, the Burmese military down without our unity. We have to bring them down. We have to bring them down with our strength and our wisdom as soon as possible. Thank you. Nico Mount Mari, music in the Sayesi Ari Bamabi Yego, the Shalom Juban song, Yanni Gare Dubi. I love woods and the Jesu Tene, who just somewhere Yebori, Tweku, General Pelu, Sello Jamas, Ray Zubido, Kozani, Kuru season, Pimu Bomajan, or two Jesu Tene, now to the Pin Aku, Jimmy, Alla Kuziato, Kulamu, Nakutura, Aunu, Nedua, Alla. จ่าซ้อมว่าเลยอาจารย์นี่อป้องทางกูว่าช่องเส้นเนี่ยจุลัยคนนี้เนี่ยนี่ทราบกันนี่ที่จ่าซ้อมว่าเลยเยอะบ
Plăcere. Ok, ce nu, ce nu pe ca o ține de. Ce zute mare? Ce nu duria de centru bun, ne, ce nu Cadale, la ce nu microfon. Ah, ce zute mare? Ce nu duria de centru bun, ne, ce nu Lucy Lucy Lu mi iar ce ne ne. Să le pe ce mare. Mi prima gente la temi
thank you. Thank you, Komoan. Um, he will also uh, perform the closing uh, piece uh, towards the end. Uh, the next speaker I'd like to uh, invite is uh, Vinita Ramani. Uh, the, she and I have shared uh, you know, connections with the uh, documentation uh, center in Cambodia, and she was the co-founder of the Justice for uh, Access to Justice Asia, uh, the org an organization that um, represented Khmer Rouge survivors and victims at the uh, Khmer Rouge Tribunal, uh, officially known as the Extraordinary Chambers of the uh, Cambodia, uh, the, uh, the Court of Cambodia. And she's also a, a music and film critic, writer, editor, and uh, just one of those uh, polymaths. And so um, she is speaking um, from Singapore, um, and she is uh, the Singaporean uh, Indian. Vinita Ramani. Um, can everybody hear me? Yes. OK. Um, just before I start, um, I had intended to read something that would um, make reference to um, testimonies that, that we had gathered in Cambodia over the course of the eight years that we were working with um, uh, the mentorship of people like Yuk Chang and, and, and many, many, many other brothers and sisters who worked with us in solidarity there. But um, uh, I, I feel it's important to put Singapore very much at the, uh, the, the center of uh, what I'm going to uh, say here tonight since uh, um, as we're speaking, I'm aware that, um, you know, while investor appetite to be in Myanmar, as many, many of you have spoken uh, about the government industry and other investors, has actually waned since the coup happened. Um, Singapore actually remains one of the top sources of foreign investment in Myanmar. Um, at least 300 um, US um, million dollars uh, as, it, as it stands, in fact, probably exceeds China's uh, investment in the country at present. Um, that's a sobering thought. And uh, the, the other thought that is equally sobering, some of you have made reference to this today, um, many of the speakers here have made reference to this, um, is that Raja Paksa uh, from uh, Sri Lanka, um, Gotabaya, arrived here uh, on uh, July 13th, 14th from the Maldives. Uh, we expected him to be out of the country by the end of July, and as it stands, his uh, his uh, uh, visit here has been extended until the 11th of August, as far as we know. He is not seeking asylum. We have clarified, we, we the Singapore government, that is. Uh, and, and so while many people struggle to stay here and even get something as basic as long-term visit passes to rightfully remain in the country as um, partners and spouses and members of families in Singapore uh, and, and, and struggle to have the right to work, um, we seem to be you know, uh, have found a way to to justify the the ongoing um, visit and and stay of of genocide heirs and war criminals and um, who who have been, um, you know, uh, are required to return to the country to to answer for the economic crisis and the failed state that Sri Lanka is and and yet are currently probably staying in private residences and or hotels in this country. So, that's Singapore. Uh, that is that is what is happening. And uh, and so I'm I've, I've shifted gears, Azani. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really I really appreciate appreciate you sort of putting in the time. Uh, it's an honor to be sharing the space with, with all of you from across so many different countries and continents. Uh, what I'm going to read is actually a, a piece of spoken word poetry that I have read in um, Singapore before. It's called The Tower of Polyphonic Babel. And, and for a long time, I've kind of had this um, perverse kind of fantasy of, of a dystopia, or in some cases, maybe you could argue a utopia of a Singapore that does, does not look like the Singapore we know today, um, the, the capitalist haven uh, and the beautiful uh, garden in the city, the city and the garden as, as, uh, as our, our slogan and our log uh, logo goes for Singapore, passion made possible is what the government says. Um, I'm imagining a city that has actually long fallen apart where the economy has crashed and where uh, dissidents, migrant workers, asylum seekers and refugees, as well as the wildlife that currently lives in captivity has actually um, made a home of this this island that has gone wild and and that is that is the portrait that i'm painting and this uh, this is the this is the poem that i'm going to read and it's called the tower of polyphonic babel part one the towers it began with depredation then the lush towers green certified rooftop gardened and award-winning began wilting and crumbling one evening after the crisis 2,800 high-end condominiums at various stages of development, left barren and unfinished, became unkempt. Sealant on walls shedding like flaking skin, windows disassembling from hinges and flinging themselves from great heights, shattering in a dissonant soprano pitch. 
An unjust decrepitude as solitude crept up floors and stairwells, wrapping and weaving itself into cement sinews and brick bones. Bromeliads, ferns, epiphytes and rosary vines replaced by gusts of air and their echoing sighs. Virde, 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 agam, home, house, property. It's been five, maybe 10, 15, 50 years since the pinprick of fact pierced the housing bubble and left an exodus in its wake. Quitters, stairs, they knew they'd be quitting if they stayed. 500,000 homes reach for skies the color of gravel and sand, skies too barren for rain, but gilded in palm oil and effervescent when it came. Part two, the people. 965,200 migrants by some estimates, maybe a million, maybe more. We, worker, migrant, makkal, mudliyar, isse, kavi, pagal, transient, domestic, transnational. We stayed. We, an inchoate entity, a people united in rubble, rabble rouser with no house to house her, purakur vidagalam in the tiran the nagaram. This is my open, gaping, broken, and brilliant home. My stoop, my perch with vertiginous drops to reclaimed earth. The distended city suddenly quite starved, but at least it staved off a bloodbath. We, the permanently transient, our fugue state was subterfuge. We knew being outcast Terrans, we were predisposed to shift terrain, not fit to make territorial claims. So we waited, we wait, debt, bondage and bond free. Muckle, this is our time. The sky is in our hands. The storms form in our mouths. The sun is in our bellies and we are full of light. Sundays will never be the same again because we stayed. Oh, we're patriotic, loyal loiterers, also wanderers, itinerants, identifiable by papers. If that makes you feel safer, we're not citizens and there is no citizenry to civilize us. I'm Indian, Bangladeshi, Filipino, Indonesian, Burmese, Sri Lankan, Chinese, and there is one vida, one house left unfinished, where we congregate. We call it Sakti Vail Kumaravelu Housing Estate, at the junction of Racecourse and Hampshire Road, where he was slain, the Little India Riots, that's where they took place. Five, 10, 15, 50 years ago, we only remember his name. Filch a signal of a neglected cable and we play YouTube channels of Tamil songs and the moon is corpulent. But our temples have been emptied of coins, jewels and filigree. The idols are naked but still serenely smile and even an apocalypse cannot kill fire. So we light thebums, oil lamps, every evening and we wrap the pantheon of gods and goddesses in our lungis and handkerchiefs. They, the gods, look ready to work like us dusty, lean, and burnt by the sun. We touch the gods now, we the priests, we the people, Makkal, we've even broken the supposed glass steeple. Three, the babble. At 10.20 p.m. May 8th, 2019, an organ of state decided to protect us from false and manipulative claims. Paglikina bole, chablikina kai. Is there nothing a madman won't say? And is there nothing a goat won't eat? It's been five, 10, 15, 50 years, and this is what's left, the 50th anniversary of democracy under threat. We celebrate how truth eroded the infrastructure of fact, its architects left long before the collapse. It's manipulative to manipulate a weakened citizenry into thinking that somehow their truths are false, surely. This is no time to prevaricate or pontificate about how Pofma determined our fate. Another rabble rouser, really? Another ranter in the rubble, babbling and haggling for the right to what? To hasten the diminution of public confidence, to be diminutive. I want to be uncertain, even insecure, unwilling to prostrate, willing to procrastinate, to delay my allegiance to any organ of state. But that delayed reaction came too late. They left a bill of gibberish in their wake and in its place an infrastructure of cut and paste took over, sophistically called deep fake. Part four, the beasts. Was it five, 10, 15 or 50 years ago? On that first fateful day of the great departure past cars littered with empty expressways, the animals from the zoo escaped. It was a catalog of motley creatures, 
a Sumatran elephant, a white-lipped rhinoceros, a wildebeest, a pack of African painted dogs, one pensive male orangutan from Borneo, the entire troop of chimps and baboons, and a bale of Burmese roof turtles. Some wound up in Bukitima Hills and others would follow when the vets and keepers left and did not return. These animals were the first of their kind. We attempted to report on their inner states. Captivity, what it is to be bounded yet safe, managed yet wild, fed yet hungry, dependent yet free, dying yet breeding in assurance colonies, colonized but assured, insured with life, adored yet entirely misunderstood, categorized and campaigned for, yet soon to be made extinct, IUC and Red List heroes on the brink. The macaques they found were like the vanaras of the Ramayana, monkeys that are occupiers, natives, and exiles returned. The sideshow to the main act of manly conflict, no longer they bred well, and being resilient, the macaques survived. Part five, the land. Was it five, 10, 15, 50 years ago, 724.2 square kilometers of Singapore was peripherally, not Singapore, its margins eroded and reconstituted, concretized and made angular. But slowly that sand starts to slip away and returns to reclaim itself, winds its way back to its ancestral lands seeking restitution. 7,000 uninhabited islands, 24 unnamed and lost, a habitat for sand habitually alive, habituated to survive. Billions of particles stolen in the night, trafficked, shipped, tankered, squandered, dredged and sequestered, not by corsairs or privateers, not by impoverished pirates from the Riau Islands and Sumatra, wielding machetes and RPGs, no, but by private contractors, businessmen and government officials, unofficially off the record. They made refugees of the land itself, the land lost, the land stripped, the land taken, the land becoming landless. Trillions of sand grains fragment, separate, and then gather up as if impelled by a magnetic force, like a gaggle of disparate particulates, they thunderously yawn, yearning to go back home. The mangroves grow limbs and line up along the coast, revived and receptive to the dramatic return. And so crab, fish, coral, and biota in Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, Myanmar, and the Philippines lie in wait, in potential, extant, not extinct, to rediscover habitat, to colonize and breed, while the island of Singapore, the city-state, now smaller still, rests finally in bondage-free peace. Thank you. Thank you, Vanita. That is truly powerful. Um, the next item we have is uh, to play the uh, two minute uh, pre recorded message of love and solidarity, uh, recorded in Sarajevo uh, by the lead singer of uh, this band, uh, based in Seattle, uh, called Culture Shock. Uh, the, the band is international but with root in um, Bosnian Federal Republic, a former uh, a part of the former Yugoslavia. And uh, it combined a, a Bosnian folk, gypsy and punk. Hi, my name is Srđan Jevđević and people call me Gino. I'm a lead singer for Culture Shock, the band from Seattle, Washington, United States that um, is made by international members all around the world. The reason we are addressing you right now are the horrible things that are happening in Burma to the democratic people, to the people that are supporting democracy. The fascist militant government is killing, literally killing people who do not agree with them brutally. Um, since I am from Sarajevo, not just originally, but also I live there when I'm off the season, when I'm not on the, on the road, we do know what's going on when the war and the war crimes come in, 
into our hearts and into our neighborhoods. Now, uh, I would like to address something that I've been thinking about for quite some time. Fascism is back. Uh, we need to know that and we need to confront it. We as a whole, as a world, if one of us suffers, nobody's free. Fascism is a very weird and very strong beast that we thought that we executed a long time ago, but unfortunately we didn't. It is uh, giving very simple answers to very complicated questions. And for everything that happens, it's somebody else's fault. That's an ideology that is very easy to understand if you don't want to think. But for us, free people all around the world, we know that at least the attempts of democracy, even if we can't get it all the way straight, are better than autocratic systems. Please support the people of Burma. We love you all. the uh, pleasure to invite uh, my co-host and uh, my uh, Rohingya comrade brother, uh, Nis Salman. He's co-founder of the Free Rohingya Coalition. And also he has been uh, one of the world's uh, leading experts on Rohingya history, culture, and uh, you know the persecution uh, they have suffered as a national community. 
at the hands of the Burmese military. And after Nissan, then we will play uh, two Turkish, uh, you know, songs um, that were sent uh, specifically <coughs> royal. And then I will say a few words in closing. And then our uh, dear uh, colleague uh, Komoa will close our event with his last um, piece. Nissan. Yeah, thank you, Kozani. It is a privilege, though a sad one, uh, to be here at this event with you to honor the life of the four murder activists, namely Ko uh, Choming Yu, Ko Pyo Ziyato, Ko Lam Yo Ao, and Ko Zotura Ao, and to pay homage to their selfless and novel sacrifice. So, already in the struggle for freedom, dignity, and democracy is needed now more than ever, as we witness the continuing terrorism of the uh, Myanmar military. The military agenda is now carrying out judicial execution and it is doing so with impunity. Impunity it has enjoyed for decades. Our country has been under military oppression for more than six decades. We expected a response from the international community uh, that was different from what we have seen. So far, we have not received anything more than some sanction which, uh, gender, uh, which the gender doesn't care about. And also some statement, the usual, we are gravely concerned type of statement. The gender doesn't give a damn and at time has responded to statement by doubling down on its, its usual course of action. In our country, while we have seen murder and mayhem against my community, the Rohingya and other ethnic minority for decades, last year, after they seized power, the military started committing crime against humanity, against the entire population. The will of the international justice processes are inexplicably slow, given the killing spree that the junta is performing on a daily basis, killing activists, students, civilian, young children, and displacing hundreds of thousands. As a member of an, uh, an oppressed minority, I fully sympathize with the suffering of the Ukrainian people. They are under oppression of Russia, and we are under oppression of the Myanmar military, an ally of Russia. While the wall cares so much about Ukrainian, we feel we are neglected. While Ukrainian receive full support, their resistance against the Russian invasion, we receive their statement only. The world leaders speak much about peace, but we can see clearly that they still don't have the will to help bring peace to our country. This for me signal the significance of what these four people have done for us. They have shown courage and audacity, and they have signposted to our people the way forward. In them, we see that we have fearless people resisting the oppression of the military. In conclusion, we ask you to stand in solidarity with us. We ask you to do whatever you can do to help change the life of our people, 50 million of them. Thank you. Thank you. You will speak in Burmese or no? No, no, I'm finished. Okay, all right. Um, so we will play um, two Turkish um, pieces sent to us by our old friend in Ankara, uh, Mehmoud, and uh, we'd like to thank uh, Mehmoud for obtaining them, especially for us. Nisalwe? <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, finish. Okay, cool. Um, well, it's um, my um, my honor to say a few words about the not only the four executed brothers, but you know all the executed, tortured, maimed, killed, slaughtered, raped. They're all martyrs for our country over the last almost sixty years. You know, I. One point I want to share uh, in my 
30 plus years of nonstop involvement in various forms and capacities to end the military dictatorship is the following. You know, we think dissidents are just uh, people on the streets or writers or, you know, intellectuals or artists or painters or, you know, dancers who uh, they try to live their, you know, pro-democracy values. Um, or hu uh, pro-human rights um, values. But we need to recognize, that, or I have recognized that in all these years, that dissidents come in different forms and different ages, different sexes and in different professions. So I wanna talk about one particular dissident who was executed on the 27th of July, 1976, 1977. I knew him. I was only 13 years old at the time. And he was a classmate and a close friend of my mother. They founded or co-founded uh, the literary club at Mendeley, at the University of Mendeley, where both of them attended. This was late 1950s and 1960s. You see here, young men, tall and handsome, dark skin, in the red circle. His name is widely known, but his story is not, and much less his image. So this is a picture that I inherited from my mother who passed away some years ago, and my mother in the blue circle there. And so Captain, his name is Ong Cho Mien. He was attending Mandalay University in the 1950s, late 50s and early 60s before he joined uh, the officer training school and rose through the ranks to become the uh, personal staff officer for the vice chief of staff for the army, General Cho Chen. And after 1975, Utan's uprising, when the general secretary Utan's body was brought back to Yangon um, from New York, where Utan passed away, General Nguyen mistreated uh, the in his funeral and attempt, in an attempt to denigrate, you know, the the <clears throat> the general secretary that the Burmese people took so much um, pride in because we had nothing to be proud of. The country was in economic ruins and the country was also turning into a politically repressed uh, mass murderous police state. And so the student took the opportunity and used Uthan's uh, mistreatment by Nguyen as a springboard to launch uh, you know, one of the most powerful student strikes across the country that came to be known as Uthan Uprising. And that was brutally crushed by the order of General Nguyen. But the execution had to be done by the uh, chief of staff of the uh, um, uh, general staff, uh, NLD Uten U. Uh, at the time he was the commander in chief and defense minister but he wasn't happy. So there were young junior officers around these like you know, top defense officials, generals. And Ong Cho Min decided that he wanted to end this nightmare you know, after the Uthan uprisings and also labor uprising that were also crushed. So he organized a assassination attempt to kill Nguyen and five top leaders at the meeting, uh, the regular scheduled meeting at Nguyen's residence on Inyan Lake in Yangon. And the coup became abortive when the key officer by the name of Major Kim An a, a senior to Ong Cho Mien, who was assigned to take over the Burma Broadcasting Station on Prom Road, Rangoon, at the time, we did not have television in 1976. That was the year that they plotted the coup. So there are about 15 young officers and a few region, senior regional commanders involved in plotting this attempt. But Ong Cho Mien was the ring leader. And he had to call it off because after they killed Ne Win and five other generals, they would not have means to broadcast to the country that everything was under control and uh, you know, urged the people calm and uh, uh, appointed General Deng Wu now in his 90s 
and uh, vice chair of NLD as the head of the government, a new government, and they wanted to put Burma back on the civilian democratic uh, and developmental path, but that was not to be. So soon after, On Chiu Mien realized that the military intelligence got wind of the pl uh, plot uh, attempt, and he sought asylum from the United States government. And the U.S. Embassy in Rangoon turned his request down. And uh, you know, the rest is history, as they say. I mentioned this because um, you know the Burmese military has, for the last forty years, uh, portrayed Ong Chiu Mien as this cowardly, romantic officer. You know that had gone mad by attempting to uh, uh, assassinate the regime. But there were officers Ong Chiu Mien saved with his life. He never, ever gave out a single name. I interviewed some of the officers who were co-plotters, particularly Captain Tan Zemyang. And he told me, Tan Zemyang told me that um, he is alive today because Ong Chiu Mien decided to walk on the gallows. He was tortured uh, so he could barely walk uh, towards the um, gallows. And so he was, uh, you know, he had to be carried to the gallows to be executed. So finally, you know, this was all like a part of my research and my interview with ex-army officers. But what I want to tell you finally is, is what I learned from this incident. I was 13 years old, a middle school boy, and my parents, my mother was a high school teacher. My dad was a small businessman. They came home and I was sitting in the living room one particular evening, in fact, 27th July, 1977. My mom looked so pained and my father looked at her and asked, you saw the monks in front of Go Ong Chiu Mien's house. Ong Chiu Mien's wife was from Mendeley and he was uh, near Meitila or Avar, uh, about 50 miles from us. And my mom didn't say anything. And, we, and then my father knew that my mom picked up the fact that Ong Chiu Mien, her close friend and a, you know, fellow poet was no more. And then later they told me that Ong Chiu Mien played with me when I was a little boy. And all I remember of this, you know, dissident soldier was the fact that I met uh, him as a tall uncle coming to visit her on an army motorcycle on the back of it with another officer who was also classmates uh, with my parents. And that consciousness, you know, the mere fact that I was told and the mere fact that I remember a glimpse of this dissident soldier, that consciousness sustained me in all these years of you know, opposing the military regime in so many different forms. So today I want to say categorically, the four executed men did not die in vain. There will be people, younger generation Burmese, who will remember them and who will carry on. Thank you. Como? Uh, Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to conclude this evening's memory, memorial ceremony by singing a song called Battle for Peace. If this is a song for democracy and freedom, in Burma. <clears throat> Me se me enseñe, ya 
Thank you very much to all. Thank you very much. Good night to all of you. And uh, but we will meet on a happier occasion. Let's hope. Thank you again. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Kuzani, and thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kuzani. Good night, pa. Good night to everyone. Okay, good night. Zaini. Isham here. Thank you, Zani. Thank you.